growth factor is a mediator that is involved in the pain uh, uh, signaling pathways. It is released uh, in the periphery of, of the, uh, of, and especially in the joints. And uh, this will uh, stimulate uh, the pain pathways and especially for the nociceptive pain. So tanesumab is an antibody raised against uh, NGF. And so what you expect is to have an effect on the nociceptive pain. This drug has been developed for OA pain, knee pain, knee OA pain, hip OA, and uh, uh, there uh, are also uh, a development for low back pain. So uh, this is the main areas for, for, for pain, even if uh, there are also some uh, development for uh, uh, cancer pain. So the highlight of this study is that at 5 mg subcutaneously every 8 weeks, there is a uh, 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 significant effect on pain, on function, and also on patient global assessment, which were the three co-primary endpoints. So it means that it is effective in this difficult to treat population. This population has been already treated with paracetamol, NSAID, and opioid or tramadol and they failed or were intolerant to these three uh, uh, family of drugs. So this is a very difficult to treat uh, uh, OA population. And so having an effect uh, on pain and function uh, in this difficult to treat population I think is the main highlight of this study. The other highlight is about the safety of, of this drug. Uh, the, it is well known that this family of drugs, the anti-NGF, are able to induce rapid progressive osteoarthritis in a small proportion of the patients. Uh, th that was the reason why in 2010 there was a partial hold by the FDA on the development of the drug in order to better understand why there was this increased risk. And based on that, there have been a mitigation plan that has been implemented. So the mitigation plan was to decrease the dosage of the drug, that was to not co-prescribe the drug with an NSAID. And so based on this mitigation plan, the risk of this rapid progressive osteoarthritis has uh, considerably decreased. And in this study, what is observed is that there is uh, around 2% of the patients that can develop this kind of, of, of uh, safety uh, uh, issue, but this is e exactly in line with what has been already shown in the previous studies. What also was uh, very striking in this study is that when you look at uh, the clinical consequence of that, I mean the uh, total joint replacement, there was no more total joint replacement in the groups of tanezumab compared to the placebo group. So even if there is this increase of uh, radiological rapid progressive OA, there is no statistical significant impact on the number of total joint replacements. I think that we have now a, 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 a lot of studies with tanezumab showing a, 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 a significant effect on hip and knee OA pain and function. So we have the, 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 the studies uh, in order to have the, the drug on the market, of course, because of the safety issue uh, with this rapid progressive OA. What we are discussing now is for which patients there is the optimal benefit risk uh, uh, to be uh, uh, prescribed. So it's more now a discussion around the population of patients who can benefit the most with the drug. The main point is that in this study, uh, uh, in a very difficult to treat population, uh, we reach the uh, 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 primary endpoint on the pain, on the, on the uh, function, and also for the patient global assessment.